Hello and welcome to Drawing with Jesse. And um, I was thinking it'd be fun to show you guys how to draw with more of a uh, bubble method. <laughs> and it's a good way to get started at the beginning. And um, so these chickens seem like a really good way to start in with with that. So um, give me a chat when you find this. Let me know that uh, you found the stream and that um, you can hear me. And okay, I'm gonna. Oh, <laughs> hello, welcome. Oh my gosh, cool. Well, um, <laughs> fantastic. Welcome. There we go. I'm just gonna grab a regular old pencil, and you've probably heard me mention that number two pencils are fabulous but they're kind of hard to see through um the camera and youtube and all that so um so i generally start with a softer pencil because they show darker lines and So <laughs> this is the kind of sketching I do on my own. This is uh, my dog, Otter. And... Okay. So... <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I love these chickens. These are my mom's chickens. They're fancy speckled ones. Um... Oh, wow. Thanks, Chris. I will fix up my about page. I obviously haven't even looked at that since I set it up <laughs> forever ago. So thank you so much. And, um, and then this week I'm going to Omaha for the um, American Impressionist Society exhibition. And it officially opens to the public, I believe, Saturday night at 6 o'clock. But um, I'm going to look that up and make sure. And um, and so if you're on my newsletter, you'll if you get my, um, my notifications about new art, you'll see a little note about that. And so... Here we go. Um, so welcome and let's sketch. So one of the things that we did when I was in art school, um, when people were just sitting down and getting used to the idea of drawing um, people, was that we would try to find the bigger shapes in them. And so, um, and so I thought it would be nice to apply that to a couple of these chickens and just show how that works. Um, cause if you're getting started with drawing, um, a lot of times finding those shapes is a challenge at first. So, um, I'm looking at the chicken that's on the right. There's obviously a bunch of chickens here, but it's on the right in the front. And I'm just going to try to get the general shape down. And so, um, and so I'm trying to think of this in terms of like large ovals or large general shapes. And so I'm going to find that body shape. And it's kind of a, this kind of a shape. 
And so the tail's not attached because that would make me go in and then out here like this. I'm just trying to get that big shape of the body. Um, so next, and let's see, I might rearrange this so you can see it smidge better. But let me know if you can see okay or not. And I might be able to scoot in just a smidge here. And as always, please let me know if I'm ever like in the way of what I'm drawing or if I have other technical issues. I appreciate it. Okay. So that doesn't look like much yet, right? but um, but it will get there. So, so there's basically this oblong circle, sort of an oval here. <laughs> awesome. They do have beautiful coloring. Oh my gosh. And they're pretty friendly to each other, which is neat. So there's this head sticking out. And so... I'm just looking at like what's the general shape I could describe that head with and um, I'm gonna try to get it with another ovalish kind of shape I don't want any specifics I just want the general shape of it something like that and so I've got this kind of body and the head and I'm missing the tail. There's no beak, no specifics. That's the whole point. I'm trying to be as general as possible here and just learn how to see these big shapes. And then there's this tail that sticks out. And so the tail, it feels like it's overlapping somewhat of the body. It's not sticking out the end. It's kind of sticking out this way from the middle of this behind. And so I'm going to start my oval right around here. And you know, it doesn't have to be an oval. It just needs to be something that is descriptive of this shape and really simple. So there's no feathers on here. There's no like indentations for where the body is different here or there. And now I'm going to break it down a little bit more because the body here really seems to have the top half with the wings and the bottom half with all this fluff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good point. So Milk Point said that the tails are kind of the shape of a white-tailed deer's backside, and they do look like that. They look very much like that. And so you you can separate these shapes out in any way you see them. I'm just showing you how I see them. But um, So the bottom half here is kind of its own separate thing, so I'm just going to separate that a little bit. And comes around like that. And now I feel like I've got most of this bird. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I'm really enjoying reading you guys' chat today. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> so there's this front leg area that's a little bit separated here. So I'm going to keep getting more specific and get this front leg in here. And so like as you go along with this, you can kind of correct and say, well, it's a little bit skinnier here and bigger there, but still it's just looking for the general shapes. And then like the little foot sticks out right there. And then so, so here we go. This is a, a really funny shape, but if you want to see how you take it from, from this 
to um, something that resembles <laughs> this chicken a little bit more. Um, I'll show you, but I just want people to know if you're starting out drawing, we spent, um, I can't remember how long, I don't know, um, weeks of every day drawing this way. And so we had a model that would sit and, and then all of the art students would draw them with a circle for the chest and a circle for the hips. And, um, and it seems weird and it felt like stepping back. Like I, I thought I could draw <laughs> when I got there. But I learned so much about how shapes work and how to see. And so I absolutely recommend filling up some sketchbook pages with just trying to get down to the big general shapes. And, um, and if you, if you haven't done this before, I, I bet you'll get a lot out of it. Or, or even if you have and you take a step back, and look at those big shapes again. And um, so then after you develop confidence in finding these big shapes, then you can find how they relate to each other. And so, um, you know, all these overlapping shapes, they're distracting and it makes it hard to see the chicken inside. So we'll just see how this shape relates to this one and they kind of join up at an angle there and so let's see how this head connects to the body let's see there's this sort of scooping shape and and then you know you're looking for um, like how they connect and then also how they are um, need correction and um, and could use a little bit more specific information so I'm going to bring this shape down a little bit the way I see it and it also seems like there's the shape is a little bit more squared off right there on the bird. And let's see. And so the reason I thought this would be really neat to do is because um, it's, I know that there are a lot of people who watch this who really haven't drawn before and, and it can be hard to just sit down and draw circles and feel like at the end of the day you've got circles. But, um, you know, it's all about learning and little steps. And eventually you just find that you can draw. <laughs> and that's really neat. And this is the work that goes into that. Um, so, here we go. So, I'm just looking at how does this... Uh, this part here relate to the um, back side and so these chickens have the fluffiest back sides they are hilarious um, I, uh, I don't know they're so pretty so this shape just looking for the how if I've got it to fit in here quite right so the wings you can see they come down like this they kind of scoop over the leg here and then down here and then let's see and then there's this real overlapping where the buns kind of go around this way and then the the tail comes up right here so and I'm 
<laughs> I've been tempted to erase these lines underneath, but I'm leaving them for now um, just to kind of show the progress here. Of, and so let me know if you're drawing along, if you're giving this sort of bubble drawing method a chance. And, you know, and you might, you might go along and find, well, you know, I feel like this part could be better or that part could be better, but, you know, it's so much about the practice and the experience. And when you see stuff like that, then you know that your next drawing, you will have better skills at seeing and it'll come together easier. And... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need to do some sort of um, uh, animal mashup. <laughs> and uh, that could be pretty fun drawing. <laughs> and let's see. So I'm going to get rid of some of these, um, these shapes that are not very helpful, the lines in the background. And so you can see this is way before style. This is, um, this is just a fundamental getting the basics in the right place or kind of learning how to see the general parts of the thing. Um, and I remember how hard it was when we started out, everybody just kind of struggled with like, how do you refine something very complex, like a person or in this case, an animal down to just some circles and how do you decide where you see them? And I remember it felt really like there's a certain way to see which shape is which. And, um, you know, I felt like I didn't, I didn't really know what the rule was or how do you figure that out? And, um, now I think, there isn't really, there are certain ways that are easier to see which shape is which. Um, and, um, but if you can break it down into some basic shapes that make any kind of sense to you, that's more important than any kind of rules or methods somebody else would come up with. And um, like for people, you generally have your shapes be the parts of the body that don't move. So you'll have a shape that is um, like the chest, the that kind of represents the bones of the chest. Well, I guess they do, that part does bend somewhat, but um, you would have a different shape for the hips and a lot of times leave the really bendy part, like the, the stomach and the waist um, out of the shapes, out of the big circles. And it makes sense to do it that way, but I could, I think other people do it differently. And, um, you know, as long as you can understand what your shape is trying to represent, um, that's the really important thing. Um, and so <laughs> it's so funny looking. It's, you know, a lot of times I, I draw stuff on here with you guys that, um, it's just, it's so, <laughs> I can't believe I'm drawing stuff that's so funny looking. Um, so publicly, but 
There it is. And, um, and that's part of what I want to show you guys is just that, um, you know, you can feel like you're confident about your drawing and not feel like every drawing needs to be great or um, that each drawing needs to look great the whole time you're drawing it. And um, I actually kind of think that making some real stinker drawings is usually a very good sign because it means um, for me that I'm pushing myself. I'm, um, you know, when I make drawings that I kind of cringe about, it's because I'm out of my comfort zone and, um, and I'm learning something new and, and that's pretty neat. So I'm just trying to find these shadows out here. I'm, I'm done with the general shapes. I've gotten what I can out of that. And now I'm just trying to see how does that fit into, how do I use that to draw this chicken? And <laughs> well, um, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I use a lot of, um, techniques to get things where I want them, but also I've just been practicing for so long that I can, um, my eyes and my brain work a lot better than they did when I started to kind of get things where they go on the page. Um, but, but, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> it takes a lot of work to get to a point where you feel um, or at least for me, you know, I did put a lot of effort into learning how to draw, but it was fun effort. You know, I, I just, I loved sketching in my sketchbook and, um, and I was encouraged from a very young age and, um, I appreciate that a lot. And so, I like the idea of, of being the encouragement for those out there who, um, who want that. So I'm just getting some of these shadows in here to make the shape come together a little bit more. Uh, just to show that drawing this chicken <laughs> as a couple spears, um, it can still come together and be fairly realistic. Um, or it could come together in a number of styles, or it could just stay as the spheres. Any of those are just great. Yeah. Oh, and so let's see. Hmm. I love that. So Kara said that in a class years ago, we had a project where we drew the same image using all circles to black it in. And then we drew it again with all squares to black it in and then with all triangles. And it helped to give us an idea of what worked best for different areas. I love that. That what a great idea. Yeah. Well, and you know what made me start thinking about this, um, I was thinking about a class I took, it was, um, as a returning student, I, I, um, I went and took art classes as often as I could, um, even when I was, uh, you know, I was just working in a different field and wanted to get the art, the art time in there, and I really love art classes, and I took this art class from this um, guy who's just so skilled at drawing, and um, and he had us draw um, cubes and cones and um, spheres, and 
it was so challenging. <laughs> but you like even as a person who'd been drawing for like 15 years by then I felt like I was learning a lot about the general building blocks of everything um, because uh, so much of what you see out there you can uh, you can just really um, simplify it down into those three shapes um, and then you can understand perspective more. And oh my gosh. So let me know if you guys are drawing these chickens too. And let's see. There we go. So I'm going to erase some of these stronger lines that are unnecessarily separating the shapes. And and let me know what you think about this, like, um, this funny process for, um, for finding the basic shapes in here. And... Yeah, that is cool. And here, I'm going to give that chicken on the left a shot. And so uh, one thing you can do when you're filling up your page is you don't necessarily have to put things right next to each other. If you see them next to each other, you can just scatter things all around. You can draw the same thing bigger or different somewhere else. And... So I'm going to use this same method on this chicken that's on the left in the front. And so when we were learning about um, how to find these basic shapes, there was no thought about like the composition of the page. <laughs> or shading or um, anything besides just getting those big shapes um, down into something more simplified. And, um, and I think that that's actually really helpful to be able to um, focus on one thing. And, um, and just kind of try to work on getting shapes and then think about composition separately at some other point. Um, but then also it's nice to put it all together and, and, uh, you know, make a really beautiful page. So, and yeah, it's it's funny. Um, you mentioned about um, like sort of spatial seeing, and um, it's just so interesting how differently our brains work, and when it comes to spatial stuff. And, um, you know, like <laughs> just whether you can understand maps and puzzles well and quickly and, um, and that stuff, um, like I, I know it's a big challenge for me, so it's, it's really interesting, um how some forms of spatial understanding you can kind of uh, just like really work on and uh, and I think some things um, can still remain a big challenge you know okay so I'm making the big giant shapes and then I'm kind of breaking them down into these 
smaller shapes and getting a little bit more refined as I go. And so if you're drawing along and you're starting out and you end up with something that is not a blank page and you've got some shapes in there, then um, give yourself a pat on the back and that's huge. Um, it, it takes a lot of bravery and um, and it all pays off. Every time you draw, it helps you to improve. And, and if you've been drawing a lot, then, you know, break down your shapes into smaller shapes that are more specific. Okay, so I'm trying to get the shape of this um, neck here and how it relates to the body, how it just kind of comes up from the body. And then the head is right on top of there. And <laughs> their proportions are so cute. And you know, if you're having fun exaggerating the proportions, that's awesome. And there, I'm kind of having a little bit of fun exaggerating proportions here. So I'm just kind of indicating with some little sticks here where, where the feet go. Okay, and then so I'm just kind of checking back and forth proportions and um, trying to decide a little bit about, you know, exaggerating or not exaggerating because it really seems like it lends itself to that. So, um, let's see. There's this kind of separate area right there. I'm just going to circle that. And then this area here. feels like separate bumps. Like the chest comes out and goes back down and then this bottom area is all fluff and it, it's like this little pillow underneath. And, and then, you know, for areas where it's like, oh, wait a second, that was actually much smaller. That's okay, just move it. And or leave it if you prefer. <laughs> if you like, you know, this is different than the original, but I like what I did. Then keep it, be happy. And, uh, okay. So, got some basic chickeny parts here. And so, since this is a pencil, I'm just gonna smear this around a little bit. <laughs> and and then start finding um, the shadow and the light just to give it some roundness. So um, so like I said, we didn't get to do shadow and light <laughs> for a long time. We were just doing this, um, you know trying to use spheres to um, to block in the forms, like I said, for weeks. And so um, if it seems like something you'd like to try for a while and uh, there's nothing wrong with just getting the spheres and then moving on to the next thing um, or just working on that and trying to get it until you feel confident with um, with your ability to find the shapes. And so just find where the shadow is here and
Okay, and get some of this in here a little darker. Just to help see that form. And erase some of these uh, bright lights here. And you can tell I'm not worried about the color on the chicken. I'm just finding where the light is and where the dark is, where the shadow is. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this girl, she's lucky she has a job. And, uh, yep. Alrighty. So, <laughs> here we go. Um, so, let me know what you think of all of that. And um, <laughs> apparently, I'm making everybody hungry for chicken. That's, that's hilarious. Um, yep, yep, yep. And. Uh, Let's see. Well, so let me know if you are drawing along, if you were sculpting or painting or doing something totally different and, um, and what you think of this whole process. And um, you are welcome to, if you watch it later, you are welcome to comment below. And before I forget, please everybody uh, click the like button and um, subscribe if you haven't yet. And those things help me out. And let's see. So, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, that sounds just about right. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> I will have to keep that, keep that from them. <laughs> there are some new chickens out there. They're sort of um, teenager chickens, and I um, I tried getting photos of them, but um, they were too wiggly. Uh, so they're uh, if I if I catch them again before they are as grown up as these ones. I might have some some new different photos to work from <laughs> for us. And um, in case you haven't heard me say it before, if I'm using photos to draw from here, um, you are obviously welcome to draw from these photos. And um, if you need to see them up closer, just let me know, and I'll um, I'll put a link in the description. They're the same speckled breed, yeah, yeah, and um, and so these guys apparently they're supposed to be, you know, some chickens can be so territorial and um, kind of unfriendly, but these guys are supposed to be um, maybe a little bit friendlier for that sort of thing, and so um, I haven't asked the last couple of days how the integration process is going. I know that she tried last week and it was a little too early. So, um, so let's see. And I'm just using the eraser to smudge around 
um, some of those pencil marks and and let's see they're they're really funny little chickens like they're <laughs> they really they follow Johnny around if they're out which is kind of cool to watch and um, they know who their person is for sure and Alright, slightly sharper pencil. And let's see if I can turn this into a little bit more refined of a drawing. And so I know some of you are uh, very, very skilled at drawing. <laughs> and I'm super curious to see what you've done with it. And, um, and then some of you are starting out and it's just, it's always so interesting to see, um, the different things that you do and, um, and it's a real honor to be part of your, your drawing journey here. Um, so, um, so thanks for that. And, okay, so I'm just looking for where where can I make some refinements to um, bring this drawing kind of to the next step. And um, so she's got this beautiful, um, I don't know what this part is called. It looks like a scarf. Um, and it's so pretty with these. It's so black. And then it has these little white feathers in between. So it's just so dramatic. And this shadow here is so pretty as it kind of turns around this corner. <laughs> yeah. Feather mane, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, cool, and thank you. I would love an Oreo blizzard. Oh my gosh. I have to go get one. The, yeah, the coloring. I can absolutely see that. And, okay, so I'm just finding some of the darker places to make. Um, sometimes just a few little specifics can bring a whole drawing together, I think. Um, and um, I'm a big fan of, um, for my own work, leaving some things loose and then refining just a couple spots. Um, and I think it's just, it's a fun way to draw. And so, um, and so, I just look for a few spots that would make a big impact to finish up. And 
I like the idea of having those be spots that are you wouldn't necessarily think of, but um, I haven't really tried that too much. So that might have to be kind of the next thing <laughs> for me, at least like trying to search for, you know, what would be a surprising part of this to finish and to leave unfinished. So pencils max out at a certain darkness. Um, and so, um, <laughs> and so at some point it's easy to try to just push in harder to get it darker, but it's not going to happen. And <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so she's got this really pretty light coming right around the side. I love that. And and you know, I just put a big old mark in the middle of the page, and I'm not too worried about that. Um, and. Yeah, I think that's just part of the process. Either erase it or leave it. Sometimes you put a mark down where you, you're just trying to move your hand and you get a mark on there and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, so for um, putting lines, like hash marks, a lot of lines that are next to each other, um, Sometimes it's nice to go along with whatever it is, like to go along with the feathers or the hair or the leaves or whatever. And then sometimes it's nice to do something completely different um, just to show a value. And, um, and so I've got both of those things going on here in this feather mane. <laughs> and... Let's see. And that tail is so dark back here. I might just pick a little bit of a spot here to darken this up. And the more you lay your pants down, the wider the mark is. And And also it's kind of a different way to control the pencil. Sometimes it feels a little easier, but it's good to try out different ways to hold your pencil and just see what's comfortable for you, for um, what can get you a line in the place that you expect it or some little marks in the spots that you expect them. And And okay. So <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave these tickets right about there. Um you are very welcome to share your work with me if you were making art while you were uh with me live here or um later on while you're watching. You can tag me at Jesse Rashi on Instagram or um, I'm Jesse Rashi Art on Facebook, um, and I'll, um, I'll come and say good job. And it's, it's always wonderful to see what you've been working on. Um, so. Just erasing my darker lines here. Well, um, I'll give you just a couple more minutes to make any comments you want about, um, <laughs> yeah, about um, 
about drawing or whatever and um, you do not have to have an Instagram account or a Facebook account to share your work with me um, and you've sent me some emails before with your work that is awesome um, and so um, don't go making yourself a Facebook or Instagram account on um, on my account unless you've really been wanting one um, and yeah, I, um, yeah, Instagram is, um, when people tag me, it's, I get a little message about it and it makes it really easy. Um, but, um, and, and Facebook, I don't think makes it quite as easy <laughs> to know. But, but, um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, for anybody who's curious, if you have an Instagram account, and you want to um, tag me, um, let's see. So then you just go, when you were making your post, um, you can like down at the bottom below your post. Um, sometimes people will even put like a period and then a return and then a period and then a return so it's down below whatever you wanted to say um, to tag somebody you put their name with an at symbol at the front so it would be like at and I can't write vertically this is funny um, so you just put at Jesse Rashi and then when you push post it notifies me that I've been tagged somewhere. Um, and so, yep, that's it. And Facebook, it's kind of the same thing, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, I get tagged on Instagram more, so I'm not quite sure how, how it works on Facebook for how well they actually let people know. But <laughs> yeah, it's true. Facebook owns Instagram. So, um, yeah, it's all kind of the same system, um, but different people developed them, so it's, um, you know, they work a little differently. Um, huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yep. Well, thank you, you guys, and... Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and um, and yeah, that's exactly why I have that contact information out there. So cool. Thank you. And um, yeah, have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for the likes. Um, for people watching later, please give it a like, subscribe. Um, if you want to know more about me, my website is jessierashi.com and I am a professional painter and um, I do commissioned portraits too. So, bye-bye. <laughs>